thanks for joining us again. Today, we are joining uh, Nikki here, as she's one of the naturalists at Jester Park, and uh, she's a little bit of a, of a snake person. Uh, she likes uh, slithery snakes, so she's going to tell us a little bit about um, these snakes, and Nikki, what exactly are you doing here with these snakes? Well, today we are feeding our fox snake, and she's actually just started. She's very hungry. It's been a couple can, of can weeks. Yeah, we can go ahead and open this and get a better view. Oh, what does she have in her mouth, Nikki? She is working on devouring a little chick there. So she gets very, very hungry, and um, it's probably going to take her a couple of minutes to finish that off. But I just wanted to get that started for her. Okay, now, now wait a minute. Wait. Now, now, was this chicken a lot? How did she kill the chicken? Is she, is she a venomous snake? Does she have poison or something? Or how did, what is she? Very good question. She is a non-venomous snake, so pretty safe around humans, honestly. Um, they are constrictors instead. So what she likes to do is coil around her food and she'll suffocate it before starting to eat it. We feed them uh, already dead animals because it's more humane and it's safer for the snakes oh, as well. So this chicken was, this little bird was already dead. She didn't, okay, she didn't, she didn't have to kill, kill that okay. one. Oh, she just, she just Oh quit. no, she dropped it. She'll probably go ahead and find it in just a now, couple minutes. So this is a non-venomous snake. So yes. if it bit me or bit somebody. Might hurt your feelings, but it won't give you any any sickness you won't have to go to the hospital it would just you know maybe draw a little bit of blood but okay it, you oh, know it would be pretty oh, yeah she's that. gonna find it <laughs> okay so now so this yeah. is not do we have venomous snakes in iowa that's a great question we do get some venomous snakes in iowa they're very rare to find though we get three species of rattlesnake the timber rattlesnake the prairie rattlesnake and the mossasaga but those are all very hard to find and then every once in a while we might see some copperheads usually not in this area not in central iowa where we're living right now so if, if i were to see a snake let's say in my backyard how would i know if it was venomous or not do i oh, just yeah. i mean do i assume in the, i know we shouldn't pick up any animal but right including always snakes, approach but. with caution um but unless if you're not used to the different species of snakes that we get here in iowa you can always be careful approaching especially if you notice a few of their characteristics this would be an example of a venomous snake. So they have more of a triangle shaped head there. Their jaws really come out a lot more broad. And then if you look at their eyes, they almost have cat like eyes as opposed to a non venomous snake that would have round shaped pupils like we do. So that's just a couple of the things. This one obviously has a rattle on its tail. A non venomous species would not have a rattle. Well, speaking of the rattling, my understanding is is some some species that are not venomous can still vibrate or rattle their tails exactly so. yes so even though these two are non-venomous species here they can rattle their tails against leaves if they're feeling threatened so that gives off the illusion that they're a rattlesnake instead but so what do we have up here nikki this other snake in the top page that <laughs> this pretty can girl we, can we open this yeah we can, can open we, can it can we get it out i would love to get her out this here is our speckled king snake. She is a very rare snake to find here in Iowa. And I'm assuming she's also non-venomous, or you wouldn't. <laughs> I wouldn't be picking her okay. up if she were okay. venomous. Well, she is very pretty. Yes, she's very, very active right now. You might be able to see round pupils, very skinny head compared to a venomous snake. No rattle on the tail as well. And her colors on top of that are very different. Now, if somebody has a question who's watching, can they, can they type in a question for yes, you? Yes, please. If you have any questions, go ahead and type them up and we can answer oh. them on our program right now too. So why do different snakes have different colors? Like why does the fox snake have spots and this one doesn't? A lot of it depends on where they can blend into their environment. So she has all these, the fox snake has very earthy colors. That'll help her blend in with the forest floor, which where you would typically find her. And this prairie king snake, she spends a lot of time out in the sun, actually, she'll be out in grassy fields. So this darker color will help her avoid getting so like, she wouldn't get burned if she has that darker color, but she also soaks up the sun a little bit easier that way as well. No, this this guy's eating again. And, and I'm looking yeah, at this, look goes. at this. Can we open this maybe? I don't want to bother her. Maybe we shouldn't open it. I <laughs> notice her, her mouth looks bigger now than like, look at how big her mouth is getting. 
Yes, she is she has... Gonna be, is she going to be able to swallow that chicken? I know. It's about three times the size of her head. But you know what, Lou? Snakes, their jaws work a lot differently than human jaws do. So she has extra bones and her jaws are attached by muscles. So she has much more flexible way to open up her mouth and be able to swallow that prey whole, which is really cool. So she's using her, her whole mouth to kind of work that down into her throat and yeah. in her body. Yes, and she does have some teeth that are very small, very sharp, really only good for holding on to food and helping push it down into her body. Okay, so, so can you show me kind of how that jaw would work? Yes, if you want. So for a human jaw, ours, our upper jaw is pretty fused to the skull. So ours would kind of open like this on a hinge. Yep. So we can't fit as big a food in there. If I was going to try and fit a large prey like this mouse, wouldn't really fit into your mouth very well. But if you had snake jaws, you can try this at home if you'd like. All you need are a pair of rubber bands and you would put your hands together like this, put one rubber band covering your thumbs, the other rubber band covering your pinkies, and now try to open your mouth, but don't worry about the hinge. There you oh, go, see how much wow. more space you get? And now, and now you can fit much larger prey oh, yeah. into your mouth there. So that is kind of how snakes are able to eat. That's really cool. It's very cool, very complex, different from us as well. So that's how snakes can eat? huge things mm -hmm. uh, um if so we if we could eat like snakes could if we could open our jaws like that then it would almost be like we could fit a whole watermelon in our mouth oh, that'd be awesome at the same type yeah so I could eat like a don't try that at i could eat like a basket of <laughs> so it looks like we got a question would you take a question yes sure? okay how about a question yeah. from the audience uh are speckled king snakes native to iowa are speckled king snakes native to iowa they are native yes just very rare this is actually a threatened species because they like to live in prairie most of the time we don't have a whole lot of prairie left in iowa so uh, they are protected most of our snakes are protected by law you cannot capture or harm them in any way and this one and this species in particular if you do happen to see one out in the wild um, conservation organizations are very interested if you hear about that so if you do see one you can report it and that just helps us keep track of the population right and another question here cc age six asks what does the snake feel like oh that is a great question so since snakes are reptiles they do have scales, they have scaly skin, and it depends on the species of snake, but some snakes are kind of smooth for the amount of scales. It, it doesn't always look as smooth as they will feel, and she's actually, you can tell she's a little bit shinier. She almost looks like she'd be slimy. She's not slimy, she's dry, but she is pretty smooth. When you feel her, you can rub your hand, your finger back and forth, and she'll feel pretty smooth both ways. So again, it just depends on the snake too. Let's go back down here because it's getting really interesting, Nikki. Oh, yeah. It's down to the feet almost. So look at the head. I can see now those jaws that are expanding, like you, yes. like you said. Now here's a question. Once once that is in the snake, will we like be able to see? Because that's a huge, a huge bird. Will we be able to see yeah. it inside the snake? It's, yeah, so she will be digesting that for the next few days, hours to days, and she you will get to see kind of a lump. It won't look just like the chicken, but you will see a larger lump kind of moving through her body. Eventually, it'll disappear as she's digesting it in the next few days. Just like if I swallowed a watermelon, you'd see that. So <laughs> exactly. now, so when they grow, do this, does each scale grow with them, or how does how does that work when they get bigger? Yes. So they they do expand when they eat, and they'll after eating, you know, that helps them to grow. So they don't really. You know, they they need to be able to get rid of those old scales because first of all, it's like dry old skin. You'd want to shed that. But also the way they, they grow is they just move out of their old skin. So snakes will shed their skin usually in one giant piece and that allows them to get much bigger. This here is a shed from our king snake. Oh, so this, can I hold it? Yes. So this, this is the actual old skin of this snake. Yes. Look at that. That is so cool that this used to be 
the skin of that snake right there. Yeah, it's very, <laughs> very cool. cool. And snakes, when they shed their skin, it's kind of like pulling off your sock inside out. So Lou, I actually have a sock on the table okay. for you there. Go ahead and put that on your arm. All right. So snakes start at the head and they'll kind of peel their skin back. It, this happens about once a month or so. It just depends on how much access they have to food and stuff and how healthy they are. <laughs> so if you pull off your sock, it'd be like pulling off that snake skin back from the head inside out. So when you pull it all the way off, there you go, see how oh. it turned inside out? So this is what happens, the same idea with the snake skin. So this is actually the inside oh, out okay. version of her old so, skin So right what there. we're touching is the inside of her skin. Yes. The outside would be in here. Yes. And you can still see the old scales. Mm -hmm. That's really, really cool. Yeah, you can see some of the cool uh, details there like right. on her head you might get to see you those know what should we take one more quick look at the the chicken is yes, almost gone look Just at the, that the left, that oh you can see and you can see right here where her body is bigger from eating that bird that is so interesting look at that Wow, that is really cool. Eating is a lot of work for a snake, but uh, they look. Know, it's got its mouth something closed. Something they got to do to keep going, and so she's probably she likes to eat about every two weeks or so. Um, but the the king snake that I'm holding here only eats maybe once a month or something like that. So, I'm gonna oh, move this stick. Almost done. So since she's eating, we're not gonna handle her for the next couple of days. She just needs time to digest that food. It'd be really uncomfortable for her if we were trying to pick her up. So you always want to make sure, like, if you have your own snake at home, you're leaving it alone after you eat it. So, like, it, it just like if I eat a big dinner, I don't want somebody want to, to wrestle me or something. Right. Yeah, you wouldn't want it to would be, be leave me alone. So I want to go why we're sleeping. Not picking her up and is it done now, Nikki? Eating. Is it completely yeah, done? Yeah, she's pretty much done. You can see how fast that's moving down oh, into her body. So this is still kind of her throat. It'll get down into her stomach soon enough though. Well, that has been awesome. You can totally see the chicken inside the body now. That's that weird. is really interesting. Well, Nikki, thank you so much for letting us see this. Thank and, you. And uh, thank you to the snake. Thank you to the snakes for, for yeah. eating for us.